all or nothing. It's where you say, I always do this. I could never do that. Oh my God, that's going to be a disaster. Oh, I'm really great at this. Yeah, I can do this. I got this 100%. I'm going to go on this diet. Oh, it's been three days. I eat a chip. Oh, I'm throwing it completely out. Baby out with the bathwater. I'm just going to just blow my entire eating strategy now. Those are just a teeny tiny few examples of black and white thinking, which is exactly what we're going to talk about today. Welcome to episode 55 of the Positivity Experience, Black and White Thinking. Check it out. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to episode 55. That's over a year. Unbelievable. Um, to the Positivity Experience, I am your host, Lori. And as always, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in every week, for giving such positive feedback and on the apps and just everything. And you guys have really supported it. And I just a big shout out to yourselves. And seriously, like I love you guys and I appreciate you guys. And now I want to continue that momentum and I want to talk to you about something that I get a lot from a lot of my clients. And honestly, I was stuck in that for a really long time. I have an entire chapter dedicated to my black and white thinking and my extremes because very often you're either going to be on cloud nine or you're going to be in complete catastrophe, right? It's either going to be, oh man, things are going great or oh my gosh, this is the biggest shit show on the planet, right? Very rarely are you allowing yourself to stay in that middle ground. But here is the secret, right? Life, all of life is in that gray area. Life is not in black or white. Now, let's be clear, black and white thinking doesn't just crop up, okay? Black and white thinking is attributed to mental illness or personality disorders. It can be from like if you were bullied as a kid or if you've had adult or childhood trauma. Um, oh, narcissism is a big part of that. So it can create this sort of catastrophe because you know, obviously, if it's a personality or a mental illness, you want to make sure that you're working on that in your therapy and you're doing all of the cognitive work and you're doing the things in which you're supposed to be doing. And I see I said supposed to. And I'm gonna tell you why you're not supposed to say that. Uh, but it's sometimes like just part of my language, but I still have to change that dialogue. And 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 it's important why because should should gives you a a frame of reference of like, I'm not doing enough, like I should be doing more. Well, instead of should, let me rephrase what I was saying, right? So while you are in therapy and you're doing your cognitive work, it will really enhance your growth when you are consistent with your practice. Now, do you see the difference in that versus the supposed to do it? Supposed to seems like, yeah, I know, I'm really like not doing it, right? It's, it's a very negative connotation. And so many of the words that we use in day-to-day -day life, you don't even realize how they're black and white. You know, let's take some common ones. Ugh, this always happens. Always. Always and never. Two two different sides of the parallel, right? And, oh, okay, well, this will never happen. That's never going to be this way. Or this is never, you know what I mean? So always a negative. Two, always negative. Always and never. Two big different variables. And one's one extreme, one's the other one extreme. And you can even take that another way and say, oh, that's perfect. First of all, perfect is not a thing. We're going to talk about that. Um, but you're like, that's perfect. Or, oh my God, that is a disaster. So it's like perfect or disaster. It's, you know, I should do this. Or, you know, oh, let me enhance myself. Because when you say should, you're literally telling yourself that you're not doing enough. And it's just not going to work. And, you know, think about people who do diets. Listen, I've been on every diet on the, under the sun throughout my life, right? But when I became a health coach, I learned, no, no, let's have, just have a good relationship with the food. I know if you guys follow my Instagram, you see on my stories that when I'm cooking, you see the healthier version. I, ha I love to have something sweet um, after I eat or just as on a random, it's sort of my jam. So I just try to make it a little bit healthier, but I don't deprive myself. But let's say, I'm just going to use this as an example. Let's say that you decided you are going to go on a diet, Okay. And on this diet, you have decided you're now going to cut your sodas, your alcohol, your sugars, your breads, your pastas, you're going to do 1200 calorie diets, you're going to make sure you drink a gallon of water, you're going to make sure you're in the gym seven days a week. I mean, I'm, I'm taking it way extreme, because this is valid, because these are people that I've had to like, rein back in, who have been my clients, right? And so they go out, they spend all this money, they go balls to the wall, they decide I'm starting Monday, which I already told y'all, do not start anything on Monday. Don't wait till Monday. Intentionally start something on Wednesday or Saturday or Friday or Tuesday, not Monday. 
because Monday you're giving yourself sort of this like, okay, I'm going to go and I can tell you because I've done this. I'm going to go pig out this entire weekend. I'm going to eat everything that I want to eat. I'm just going to really go overboard, especially because I'm a binge eater. So and when you're a binge eater, you do not diet and you don't fast for long periods of time. And so when you're in that space, and you're like, so strict, first of all, you didn't even make a plan. And you're like, but I did I got my, my food. No, 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 you took something where you were, for lack of a better term, off track for you. And you've decided I am going to get on track immediately, right now, all or nothing. And then you're on it for maybe even a week. Maybe you are like, you are slamming it. You're at the gym every day. You're doing everything you said you were going to do. And you just happen to meet some girls for happy hour and you've ordered your Tito's and soda because very limited in calories. You're like, gay, I'm here. And then you take one tortilla chip, one little bit of chips and salsa. And now in your head, you tell yourself, well, I've ruined it. Do you see, do you see what I'm saying? I've ruined it. Ugh, I can't believe I didn't do that. I, oh, that's it. I'm just going to eat it all now. So then you just totally throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, and you start taking it from one extreme to the other extreme. And that's why a diet, again, I'm not a super fan of diets, but a diet will never work when you are coming out of, uh, you know, like you see it a lot for like New Year's. Oh, new, new year, new me. Stop it. Stop it. Start it on Wednesday and start it the February 3rd. You know what I mean? Like, Stop with these big high expectations of perfection. I'm going to do this. I got this. And you haven't even written it out. You're like, but I have a meal plan. But have you written out other steps? Because dieting and worrying about your weight and losing weight and scale weight, all of that has a psychological effect to you, right? So as a binge eater growing up, right, it would be, you know, I couldn't control anything else, but I could control what I was putting in my mouth. And, you know, it just kind of plagues me from time to time. It's just with the eating disorder, like binge eating, every now and again, it'll crop up. But it becomes less and less when you allow yourself to be like, you know what? It's okay. Today, I had a little bit more than I would normally eat. That's fine. That's fine. And don't get up the next day and go, okay, I'm gonna start all over again. And this, stop it. Stop. Gray area, baby. You know what I mean? If you want a piece of pizza, go eat a piece of pizza. And then maybe you're going to have a salad for dinner. Or maybe you're going to, you know, eat something different. That's fine. That's fine. But this all or nothing mentality of I'm either going to clean the entire house or I'm not going to clean it at all. I'm either going to be 100% into working out or I'm not going to be do it at all. I'm either going to be all the way in my relationship, which can become way problematic, or I'm completely out. So let, let's kind of talk about relationships because this all or nothing thinking can really hamper relationships, like legit, right? Not only can it hamper your relationship, you're going to have a hard time forgiving yourself for things. You're going to be like, oh my God, I could have, should have never done that. And why did I do that? Okay, you're here now and you have got to get to the acceptance piece that what is past is past. You will not get that time back facts, okay? And so not just that, sometimes even completing your work, like you know, it's like, oh man, if I can't do it right, I'm just not going to do it at all. Well, you're supposed to fail. You're supposed to suck. Everybody is supposed to embrace the suck because you're not supposed to be good at things that you're just now figuring out. And even if you feel like you're some big expert on something, um, hello, do you watch sports? Do you listen to singers? Do you watch movies? There are actors, there are people who have been in the game for 30, 40, 50 years, and they are the top of the cream of the crop and they still screw up. So again, if you're afraid of failure, that's black and white thinking. If you're afraid of failure, you're living in that black and white because you're going to go from failure to perfection. If I can't do it perfect, then it's just not good enough. And that's a limited belief system caused from trauma. So that's why you want to work on that. And that's where patience comes into play. Okay. So think about patience. Think about, and I'll talk about relationships in a second, I promise. But think about patience for a minute. You know how you want that instant gratification? I need that instant gratification, which is why most of us order on uh, like Amazon or other things because we get that instant dopamine hit. We're like, ooh, add to cart, right? Trust me, I feel like Amazon and I are like lovers, right? And so if it's not there, it's somewhere else. Or even like, let's order a pizza or whatever. Sometimes it's just the art of ordering something, seeing it from start to finish, because a lot of times you're not seeing things from start to finish because it's just, it's not perfect, Okay, so you want to be careful of that. Now, going into the relationship sector of this, think about, 
uh, and I'm sure maybe some of you have, like I have, ever, and maybe you've been this person, but let's say you've ever been in a relationship, and I mean, this person's coming in hot. I mean, dotting every I, crossing every T, making you feel like you are the most amazing person in their life. Number one, that's already a red flag to me. If you're somebody's main priority, that's a red flag because they don't know how to put themselves as a priority and they have to be their first priority and you have to be your first priority. So if you've automatically put this spouse or partner or potential partner in this hierarchy, that is never going to serve your best and highest good because those same people who come in hot are the same exact people who later on all of a sudden maybe you're on the receiving end of it, you're talking to me and you're like, I I just don't understand. Like we were good for like six, seven weeks. Like I don't understand. We used to talk three times a day and now we just don't talk. Like they're like avoiding me. What's wrong? Well, what's wrong is A, they came in too hot, all or nothing thinking. And it's all fun and good when you first get in a relationship. Oh my gosh, they're the bee's knees, baby. These are my people. I love them. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with them. Okay. Oh God. Oh, ugh. Okay. Let's reel that in. And remember, if you're looking for another human being to complete you, that's already, a, uh, that's already, no, that's already no, right? Absolutely not. So we got to reframe that. And so, and let's say you're on the other end of that. Let's say you're the person who we just had a one, one session two months ago and you're like oh my god it's so great and I say okay cool but make sure you're not cutting off your friends make sure you're still like living a life outside of them you know and you go okay okay I will I will and then you don't do it right because it's not my job to have you do it I'm going to give you the tools if you don't use them you don't use them that's a you thing not a me thing right and so let's say you decided to go I mean all the way in and now we sit and you go okay Lori you know what I didn't actually take your advice and that's fine And I'm like okay that's fine and you go but you know what like I don't know. I'm just, I don't know that I'm even feeling it like that. Well, of course not. You just literally took all of that all or nothing thinking and dumped it into a relationship looking to think that that relationship was going to fulfill you. And that all or nothing thinking will hinder you 10,000%. 10,000%. And that's why people will say, well, I don't even know like who I am. Like, how do I find who I am? Or you go, I can't do that. It's too hard. See, can't. We're not using can't. Can't and supposed to. No. But here's the deal. What you have, what you, let's see, what you have to get to, what I would like for you to do in order to really expand on it and expand on your growth and get to know you is to allow yourself to dissect everything in your brain that you think you believe in, right? Let's say you were, uh, like I was raised Southern Baptist. You guys know I do not practice that. Um, It was just, it definitely did not align with me as I got older. And it just wasn't my jam. And that's fine because that works for me. And if it works for you to still be Southern Baptist, uh, go great. Like go do you. This is a beautiful thing. This is the gorgeous thing about life. We can all be different. We can all believe in different things. But let's say you said, oh, well, you're going to hell. Like you're not, this isn't what you believe in anymore. All or nothing thinking. And there's a little bit of not just all or nothing black or white thinking. There's also a little bit of that, um, you know, oh, only my way is the right way. That's total ego, which is why loving, I love what I do because in my practice, I get to work with people all over the world in every different walk of life and every different religion and every different cultural background. And the amount of growth that I get from other people in looking and listening to what they believe and what they align with is so refreshing because I may be like, no, it's not really my jam, but I love that they have something so strong to believe in. Or I might be like, wow, that's amazing. I really want to incorporate that. And getting close to yourself is going to really help you with that because then you'll know what you actually believe in. Because right now you're told what you believe in. Well, I'm told family first. No, you first. No, no, you first. Because you keep putting all these other people in front of you You will always do that and you will always put yourself on the back burner. These same people will absolutely try to manipulate the situation and gaslight you. Oh, I can't. What do you mean? Why would you do? You you hurt my feelings. I'm your mother. I'm your sister. You have to be here. It's Thanksgiving. No, no, you don't. You don't. Right. And if you're the person who thinks that somebody does owe that to you, make sure you make an appointment with me because they absolutely do not. Your kids don't owe it to you to come home for Christmas. If they come, that's a beautiful thing, but they don't owe it to you, right? 
And again, black or, black or white. Black or white. There's a way of saying it that definitely is not that. And don't be manipulative in it and be like, well, you know, like I really wanted you to come, but like I totally get it. Okay, uh, okay, we could have just left that I really wanted you to come part out, but it's not awful, right? We can kind of rock with that a little bit. But you can say, okay, no problem. Well, I get that you probably want to do some other things. Do you think maybe we could pick up next weekend or, you know, maybe next month or something? Always don't start psychoanalyzing it and being passive aggressive and being like, well, I really wanted you to be here, but that's okay. I support you. Oh, okay. Well, obviously you wanted them to be there. You invited them, right? And so getting clear in that, and it's not, and I've had other people say, yeah, when one thing goes off at work or something, I literally am just ready to just walk right out of work. Like I'm done. I'm out. Or if you get into an argument with somebody at home, you're like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm leaving. I'm hopping on a plane. I'm leaving the spouse and kids. I'm going to go sell tacos in Costa Rica. Right? Okay, first of all, that sounds like an amazing plan. But number two, that's all or nothing thinking. And so getting comfortable with the gray area, because here's the deal. That is where life is. Life is in the gray area. Matter of fact, if you go over to my YouTube, which I'll have the link to that in the show notes. So if you go to like description, you'll see the show notes. But if you go to my website, uh, The Positivity Experience, or it's the same as my podcast, it's the same as my YouTube. If you go over to YouTube, I've been trying to like Monday through Friday, put up a little vlog, just a small five to 10 minute vlog um, for something. And I just did it on death like death anxiety, and I promise I'll do a whole podcast on it. Death anxiety and thanatopho thanatophobia, thanatophobia, uh, I pronounce it differently. Um, and uh, the fear of death is the acceptance of the fact that it's going to happen. That's not all or nothing thinking, that's reality. That's reality. And when you feel like, well, if I avoid it and I don't deal with it, that's all or nothing thinking. Because that's one thing, you, you're not outrunning it. You are not outrunning it. You can enhance it. You can feel better. You can eat better. You can do all of these beautiful things. You're not going to stop it. And to not accept that is a like, la, 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 la. And now mind you, it's a real phobia. So here's the thing with that. When you get in the gray area, you go, okay, this is a little uncomfortable. However, okay, what do I need to do? Whoa, what do I want done for myself? Do I want to be buried? Do I want to be cremated? Do I want, okay, don't say, oh, I don't want to think about it. Well, okay, it's going to happen. You might as well, the way to, the way to find gray is to face the things that you fear because of failure or fear because of something else, which is why you will always hear me say it. It's a huge thing for me. Do it scared. Stop waiting to be ready. Stop waiting till Monday. Stop waiting till the first of the year. Stop waiting till January. Stop waiting till you lose those last 10 pounds. Stop waiting till you feel more comfortable. Stop waiting for the weather to get better. I mean, so many excuses, right? Because then you'll say, well, I'm not motivated. I've told you this. Motivation is a total BS thing. Motivation is so, no, we're not going to wait for motivation. Because that's the whole, I'm going to gear myself up. I'm going to go on this diet. I'm going to get myself motivated. Okay. Oh my God. Slow down. And I have a whole podcast. I know most of you already heard it on microgoaling, but feel free to go back and listen to, you know, the episode on microgoaling because microgoaling is the key to life as far as your growth and you know, like getting to your goals, but doing so with little teeny tiny steps. So if you were deciding to clean up your diet a little bit, instead of cutting out all of the stuff and crap that you're eating now, let's start adding a few things positive in. Let's start adding a little extra fr fruits and vegetables or maybe a smoothie in. Let's do that instead of just boom cold turkeying it. Okay. Now that being said, there are times and places where cold turkeying is great, but dieting is not one of them. Okay. And so understanding that that all or nothing thinking will automatically set you up for failure when it comes to things around the house or relationships because you're either all in or all out or you want to be all in and you want to force the other person to be all in too. No. Now that goes into codependency, which I told you I'm working on a Patreon on that. I have not done that yet. It's on my list. Micro goals. I wanted it done before, but you know what? It'll get done when it's there. And so understanding that and understanding that the moment you start looking at these big grandiose goals and you say, I've got to do this all right now or it's not going to get done, that's all or nothing black and white thinking. And realize that it's not benefiting you. And so you're going to have to work on your cognitive 
um, you know, cognitive therapy is super helpful for it. Life coaching is super helpful for it. I know a lot of you have had sessions with me from it. And 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 you kind of see it, right? And, you know, it's going to rear its ugly head. It just reared its ugly head for one of my clients. And, you know, she said to me, yeah, I just, I, I mean, they didn't really check on me when I had COVID. Well, they don't have to check on you when you have COVID. And she's like, yeah, I kind of know that. And it's like, but now she's more aware of it, right? And so in knowing that, I'm not asking you to just rock with people who aren't in alignment with you, but also watch your expectations. Expecting you out of someone is another form of all or nothing thinking because you're saying, if they're not doing it my way, they're wrong. Well, that's not true. There is so many more ways for me to get to California. There's not just one path for me to get to California from where I live. I can take several different paths. I can hop on a plane. I can hop on a train. I could take the north route. I could take the midwestern route. I could take the southern route. There's many different ways to get to your destination. Okay. So I say that to you because that ingrained programming, because that's essentially what it is, right? Is to allow yourself, and this is the key to life, mindfulness. I told you mindfulness is the way to go. Mindfulness is allowing yourself to be in the present space. I have a 15 minute uh, YouTube and I have more scheduled to come up on uh, like a little sort of like a mindful meditation practice. It's not, it's a little different though because I have you like look and walk and all these things. But if you want, it's on my my, uh, YouTube for that. But you know, scanning your body, like how do you feel? Oh, I feel stressed. Okay, that, what's that mean? Well, my back. Okay, now we're talking. Scan your body, feel it. Feel it. Feel what you're doing. You're double journaling, positive, negative journaling. Obviously, yoga. Yoga is like an amazing thing to do, right? And, you know, you you have to understand that so much of what you feel is or could happen is based on your catastrophic thinking of all or nothing. And that's why so many of you don't know how to deal when things positive go on. And then you go, oh. <gasps> wait, what, wait, this is going to be pulled out from underneath me. Oh, wow. Okay. Catastrophic, all or nothing, black or white thinking there. Because the reality is if you're always living in prep mode, okay, then you're not living. And I'm going to tell you right now, whether you like it or whether you don't like it, you are not in control over any other human being except for your reaction. Get cozy with that. No one else has to do things the way you do them, black or white thinking. So like, let's think of some good words other than, you know, always or never, sometimes. Oh, sometimes that happens, right? You know, huh, okay, well, this seems a little bit more difficult, but you know what, I'm I'm definitely willing to put in the effort, okay? Ooh, this sucks. Kind of don't really like this, but I'm going to have to look. What can I do about it? If I can't do anything about it, I got to work on the acceptance piece of it. Okay, and so that's just a few words. There's like a million other words. But just just start watching what the dialogue that you say to yourself. Because one of the biggest things for you is you are talking way worse to yourself than any other human being could ever talk to you. And you'd be like, well, yeah, like, well, my parents talked to me. But okay, but you've now carried that into your life. Which goes into what I've said to you before. Your trauma is never your responsibility, but healing it is 1,000% your responsibility. And that's just a fact. And the more you look at something, like, matter of fact, you can see, like, the, you know, the, di- the dichotomous in thinking, right? And you can kind of see, um, see all that happening now. Like, whether it be with the vaccine or whether it be with something else. And it's this way or no way, or it's my way or your way. It's not your way. It's my way. And it, it's just a problematic space because so many people are thinking in black and white. And they just don't even realize it on that level. Okay. And, I, you know, I got to tell you, it's something for you to be honest with yourself. You have to sit, have to, see. Uh, it will benefit you. See, even I have to catch myself because it comes part of your habit. Um, so it's just, but I'm mindful of it. So when I do it, I'm like, ooh, okay, ooh, saw that. So it will, it will benefit you and it'll be in your best interest to allow yourself the acceptance. And I know everybody wants this magic pill of, well, how do I do it? You come to the realization that regardless of how much you hate it, how much you don't align with it, how much you want it to be different, it is not. 
And it's getting, and that's ego, right? That's your ego. You have a hard time dropping your ego. And yes, that can be from trauma and all of that stuff. But I told you, you don't get to use your trauma as an excuse now, right? I mean, I'm 50. And yes, when I would start dating uh, people in my early 20s, you know, I didn't want people touching my breasts because it just reminded me a lot of the molestation and some of those other things. Okay, now I had to, I had to fix that. Me, I had to fix that. Not anybody else. Nobody owed that to me. And I did. I was like, you know what? This person touching my breast is not like my dad or anybody else. And so when you get clear that you cannot hold on to your trauma and expect you to grow, I'm not asking you to forget it. I've had people say, because I do hypnotic therapy, hey, can you like hypnotize me out of this? No. I mean, I can't. No, I don't want to do that. I want you to still know it and see it and feel it, but take the the sting and the um, discomfort out of it, which by the way, comes in time and lots of it. That's not a three session thing. And you're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm here now. No, this is a lifelong practice, right? And so you have to realize that that is all or nothing thinking, thinking, well, I'm just damaged goods because of my trauma. I, I hear you, especially if you've had any sexual trauma, you go through that, I feel dirty, or I feel less than, or I feel gross, or that's a normal part of process. I don't feel gross anymore. I don't, and I've told you this before, and I think people get really surprised. I wouldn't change that. I, I don't think I would change my past at all, actually. I mean, yeah, are there things that I look and cringe and go, oh God, that was woo. But I'm here now. I wouldn't be effective in my job. It, it doesn't matter. Let's say I had some Brady Bunch type life. And in this Brady Bunch type life, you know, I just, everything went great for me. Everything was great. I would not even know how to live in this in this world if I had no trauma because you would expect everything to be quote unquote perfect. But because I didn't have that Brady Bunch house and it did create and still have anxiety, I still have massive heart palpitations, I'm going to have residual effects for the rest of my natural life from my trauma. I will have effects from my trauma for the rest of my life. Now, that being said, I'm not going to feel sorry for myself for it. Well, I'm just broken. This is going to be like this forever, right? Forever is another one of those all or nothing thinkings. And you have to realize you're here now and you couldn't control situations in the past, but give yourself gray area thinking to say, okay, I'm going to feel these feelings. I'm not going to judge myself. I'm not going to judge other people. I'm not going to hold all of this malice, which again, comes with an enormous amount of time. And so just, I want you guys to really start being cognizant of what you say to yourself and other people. Stop telling people, you better do this. You got to do that. You ought to do this. You should do this. Now, granted, I will say that in like my TikToks and stuff, but I'm not saying it from the perspective of a judgment. It's really just a word that I'm really trying to really work on reframing, at least for myself, right? And again, it's not always going to work the way I'm 50. I've been using the same language for years, Right. So understand that you will go black and white from time to time because that's a normal part of your function. But when you catch yourself going balls to the wall all the way into something or all the way out of something, you need to stop and pause. And you say, okay, ooh, this is that black or white all or nothing thinking. And I'm telling you, it's not going to benefit you. And it's going to take practice. And book a session with me. Book a session with somebody. I don't care who it is. But you got to be able to find the path and be willing to do the work. It will not happen overnight. It will not happen in a year. So you have to realize if you're looking for that instant gratification, that is 1000% black and white thinking. So instant gratification comes with that. And again, that's part of your id and trauma and all of these things. So there's a reason. Your trauma is a reason, but it's not an excuse, right? And so when you first get clear on it, and you, you can see it in yourself and you can see how you've really sabotaged things in the past from it. Okay, don't judge yourself for it. We're here now. You can't undo that. What are you going to keep going back and thinking about why did I do that? If I'd have done things different, things would have been different. Oh my God. You will live in the past and you will be miserable because you can't undo it. And that's where you'll stay. If I would have known then, oh yes. I remember my mom and dad would say things like, if I'd have known then what I know now, and I used to think, oh my God, that's such an old person thing. And then I realized I've said that to myself several times. Oh man, if I'd have known what I know now, I would have done things totally different. Okay, but you're here now. You're here now. And until you can grasp onto that 
And that's why the double journaling is so important, positive and negative journal. You need to have a place to process it, and it isn't up in your head. That is not the place that you process. Pen to pad, and don't just put it in one journal. You put them in two journals, positive stuff in one, negative stuff in the other. And you do not have to write anything in your positive journal. By the way, your positive journal is different than your gratitude journal. Gratitude journal is like, wow, I am grateful that I found my matching pair of socks. Positive journal is like, huh, I actually changed the the lingo to myself a couple times. So you still need your gratitude journal and you have to be grateful. Because if you start going to, and that's something you do have to do to start your day with gratitude if you want to have a grateful day. This doesn't mean that you're going to start your day with gratitude and all of a sudden everything is going to go sunshine and roses. But it gives you the ability to handle things because you're not looking at it from a black and white catastrophic thinking. And you know, I told you this and I want to ha- give this to you again. You're welcome to have it and use it. I tell myself when I get up, I am capable of handling anything that the day sends my way and I only ever have today. See, your big issue is putting things off till tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Stop it. You don't necessarily, you only have so many tomorrows and tomorrow turns into today. So while you're busy with your black and white catastrophic thinking, you're not finding the 50 shades of gray. Find several of them. Get cozy with them. It will be uncomfortable in the beginning. Yes, it will. It is meant to be hard. Nothing grows in the comfort zone. Nothing. Nothing. And so knowing that and being okay with feeling vulnerable and feeling exposed and feeling those things, that's going to be in your best interest in finding the gray. Be okay with screwing up. Be okay with making a mistake. Be okay with accepting that someone else isn't living their life the way you live yours. Gray areas, baby. And when you find that gray area, then and only then will you continue to grow and actually achieve all the abundance in which you seek. Check it out.